Hello everyone, welcome. In this video we're going to show a new upgrade kit in the Crystal series for BMW. Um, it works for somewhat older iDrive controllers. Um, this controller was introduced by BMW in 2013, um, production month July. It featured the new larger uh, rotary knob here and a touchpad uh, that you can write letters and numbers with. This was in production until um, June 2016. So this unit will fit uh, all models, BMW models during that time period. It will also fit all models of the i3 and the i8. So let's get going here. So we have the upgrade kit here. So we'll open it up and see what, what it contains here. So it contains some tools that we're gonna use during the installation. A blue tool here small screwdriver and a thin blade knife and of course the, the product itself but we start with disassembling the old controller so to do that we use the blue tool and put it inside under the trim ring here and snap it up Turn it around different places so it comes off. Right. We remove the trim ring here and the top printer circuit board with the touchpad. Underneath, there is a second printer circuit board that has a ribbon cable attached to it. So we're going to remove this ribbon cable and to do that first we need to loosen the connector here so we can just pry it back here like that back there and then we use a screwdriver to get the cable to come out here There we go, there's the cable. And when the cable is loose, we can remove the second printed circuit board. Putting that up here. It has a, a rubber piece under it. Make sure the rubber piece stays there. Put that aside. Um, the controller here has a center disc that is locking it. So we need to remove this center disc and there's uh, two good places where you can you can pry it open so one of them is here there we go lift that up and the next step is to remove the uh, rotary knob and we're going to work on the rotary knob here. As you might see, this is a little jagged here. So we have worked on this knob before, but the instruction will work either way. So we need to identify five tabs here. One, two, three, four, five. So we need to bend down these tabs because they're locking the black plastic part to the silver ring here. So put it down flat and press down one, two, three, four, and five. All right. And we're gonna hold um, the silver ring like this 
and we need to turn the silver ring about three eighths of an inch counterclockwise like this then you can pull the uh, parts apart here and you have this piece here so the next step here we have actually performed already to save some time uh, it is to use the, uh, the knife blade and cut off the excess rubber that is protruding out here because it will be in the way for uh, the installation so that has already been done here it doesn't matter if the surface is jagged like this it will work just fine anyway the important thing is that no rubber is sticking out um, outside the, the circle here so when we did that we had this as the result so this this are, these are the rubber pieces that came off when we when we did that step so that takes a little time so we'll skip that part so that is already accomplished here so on to the next step so we take out the new product here which contains a new rotor, rotary dial and a new trim ring and of course the new crystal piece now we're going to um, insert the uh, two parts for the for the rotary knob so I'm going to turn this this way and uh, so we need to look at there's an, a digit here on this particular unit the digit number is five that digit needs to be lined up with the small circuit small bent curved uh, cutout here so we try to aim it through here and get the number five to come straight in through through the, that cutout and then we press press the part in all the way until it comes all the way in so there should not be a gap here so we came in all right and uh, now we need to lock it and to do that we're gonna turn the uh, uh, the rotary knob of the dial here um, clockwise so that the number five moves into this position in the um, middle of the left large cutout so try to move it around now so twist it it's got to stay in position there and twist it here all the way until it locks it needs to go a little bit longer there we go now it's in the right place you see the number five is here in the middle of this cutout next step we take back the controller here and we st start to assemble the different pieces so bending this cable up a little bit so we're going to insert the cable in this hole here it has to come on the side into this hole and up so it needs to go in here Let's see, let's see. here and it's coming up here in the middle now 
There we go. It's in there. Right. So now onto the center disk. It has a slot for the cable, so you need to get the, the cable through the slot. Like that. And position the center disk and then press down to lock it. The cable should be moving freely. So there we go. The next step, we take the lower printed circuit board with the rubber piece under and place it down so the cable goes through the hole and the tabs fit in their respective cutdowns. It came in nicely there, like that. Now we need to reinsert the cable in the connector here and, and lock, uh, lock the lock. So this is a little bit precision work. So I need to get the cable down here. Under the white lock. There we go. The lock has to be open though. Okay, the cable needs to go in a little further to be able to be locked. So you can you can actually push the blue part of the cable inward until it snaps in. There we go, snapped in position there, and then we lock the lock. Right. And to, to check that the cable has connected properly, try to use the screwdriver and open it. It will not open. It's secure. On to the next step. So this has also been prepared a little bit, this step. So this is the upper printed circuit board. And a plastic ring on top of it. So in this step we're peeling off the touchpad surface. I'm just mimicking it because it's already been done on this on this piece. So peel it off like that. And then we also need to peel off the adhesive film. I already done that so that's the adhesive film that was peeled off before. So, so that step is okay. It's okay to leave some um, adhesive residue as long as it's not sticking up high. So it doesn't have to be completely clean. So it's fine like this. Next step then, we are going to put the second printed circuit board with its um, plastic ring onto the top here. So the, these three plastic pins have to fit in these three holes. See the holes here? One, two, three. And this connector has to match up with the um, connecting points here on the printer circuit board. So if I put this down in the right position, you'll know when it's in the right position because it will slide right in. There we go. Now it's time for the crystal touchpad. So we remove the um, 
protective films. The ones on, on the film on top. And the film at the bottom. So now we need to position the uh, crystal piece here so that the arrows uh, line up nicely with the, with the controller. So if we look down here uh, at the space between the back button and the option button, that's where the, that arrow should be. So line it up carefully, look from above and let it slowly fall into place and then press down and press it down a couple of times like that all right now we're ready for the final step we take the new trim ring here and we locate the uh, the largest cut out here this cutout needs to be aligned with the radio button on the controller. So I'm trying to position this so it lines up with the radio button. And there's a there's a little bit of the bit of the piece of the printer circuit board here that goes where the cutout is. So when it's in the right position, we'll just press the trim ring down. And press down firmly. There we go. We have our new crystal controller. Quite a difference, wouldn't you say? <laughs>